For the third year and counting, Richard Skipper has been celebrating the artists you love. And what are some of the things that you've really run out of time? And, I, and we've got to talk about your latest. I want to go back a little bit, first of all, and celebrate a true legend. Richard Skipper is all about celebrating life, art, and his guest body of work. And did you pursue performing opportunities while you were in high school? Please join us while he showcases these diverse and talented individuals. Here's Richard Skipper. Happy Monday, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of Richard Skipper Celebrates. I'm a little fuzzy here, as you can see, because we are in the middle of a storm here in Rockland County. But I'm going to bring on our guest today. This is Robert Montano, who is still here. He oh, was supposed you. to be. Is that you? It's me. I'm here. You were supposed to be here a few weeks ago. Everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. Uh, then we finally get on the air, and I'm talking away, and you go, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And I had the most incredible introduction to start that show. And I'm going to give that introduction now because it wasn't about you, Robert. It was about Penguin Rep. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about this jewel box of a theater that's here in Stony Point, uh, here in Rockton County. Joe Brancato, Andrew Horn, uh, have this incredible theater. And I have never gone to that theater and seen a bad production. Uh, everything they do is top of the line. It's incredible. Uh, and uh, as alchemy happens, you are going to be at that theater with your one-man show, Small, which is your journey uh, from uh, going, uh, growing up in Long Island to being a jockey to being on Broadway, and now Rockland County, Stony Point. Uh, my show is all about celebrating, celebrating life, celebrating art, uh, celebrating the fact that we are all rejoining the human race once again. I want to ask you, what are you celebrating today besides the fact that we are together again? Oh, my God, I'm celebrating ice on my ankles. Because yesterday, yesterday we had a run through of the show, you know, um, but now it's our our first run through. And um, um, it just told me, you know, I was like, oh, my God, because it's a very, very physical play. So today is my day off. <clears throat> so I'm celebrating my day off and I'm celebrating the fact, that, uh, honestly, with all kidding aside, that uh, Joe Brancato and Andrew Horn are giving me the opportunity to do small there uh, now. You know, you know, it's 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 not easy getting a a, a show up of any kind up, you know, in, in any theater, um, let alone a a, a one uh, person play. But Joe had attended uh, a reading of it that uh, Cheeto Rivera was hosting uh, for me at the uh, Signature Theater pre-pandemic, and uh, he said to me, you know, he wanted to do something uh, with it, you know. So then the pandemic hit, and you know, things happen, and but, you know, he he always kept staying in touch with me, you know, and checking in, seeing where I was at with it. So well, here we are, you know, so we, uh, yeah. We're he's getting... a man of his word. Uh, we're going to talk about this whole road that led to where you are right now. I always begin my shows with a random question, and I'm going to pull up a random question. I haven't right. even looked at the question, so I have no idea what I'm about to ask you. So God only knows where this, what road this is going to take us down. Okay. The question is... What opportunity for love or money have you given up? And do you regret it now? Great way to start the day. What opportunity have I what? Have you uh, given up for love or money? Oh, my God. Well, given up for love or money. What opportunity? Oh, my God. Don't you have an easier question? Than that? <laughs> <laughs> they get much easier as we go along. God, what have I given up for love? Oh, God. Well, that's a hard question, you know? Um, well, let what? me ask you this. I, let me see if I can make it a little bit easier for you. Oh, I don't give so, up. I know a little bit, of, uh, you know, about this road that led you down the uh, path that you went on. Yeah. You started out as uh, a jockey. Uh, that was something that you pursued. 
uh, circumstances led you out of that road into the world of show business. Uh, that was a completely different road that you went down. Uh, when you made the decision to leave that world, to go into the world of show business, and I know the circumstances that led you down that path, uh, was it an easy decision for you to leave uh, the world of horse racing? No. As a matter of fact, I mean, um, I was uh, still working at Belmont Park Racetrack uh, while I was going to Adelphi University. Um, they had given me a full scholarship there. <clears throat> and the artistic director of the university was Norman Walker. Mm -hmm. He was just very proper and just very, you know, by the book. He's old school tradition, you know, and, and um, but he was he bended the rules as much as he could for me. Uh, because I was galloping horses at Belmont at 4.30 in the morning and then getting to ballet class, you know, by 8 o'clock a.m., you know. But because we're in a college, there is no such thing as, a, uh, as an understudy. So whenever I got hurt, I never really got hurt from, from uh, uh, dancing, you know, but, but I got hurt from the racetrack. And I, I was rolled on, kicked, laid on, run over, you know um it would knock me out of performing at at the college you know and this wasn't fair i was still learning you know the language of performing performing arts um and the racetrack is just very gritty uh and um and uh you just you know work through your injuries but um they didn't even want me there during my injuries and, and i was dealing with that you know when i was at adelphi and um, as a matter of fact, so anyway, to get to your to your point, uh, Norman Walker, you know, in my uh, junior year, he just laid down the law and he said, look, either you dance or you go back to the racetrack, but you can't have both anymore. And I said, you wow. can't ask me to do that. And he says, I'm, 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 I'm giving it to you right here, right now. You either dance or you ride horses. And, uh, and I'll never forget, I just, you know, I got very emotional and I just, you know, it was the hardest decision for me to, to make. But I knew there really wasn't a life out there uh, at, at the racetrack for me anymore because it's like being an understudy when you really want to be on stage all the time and you're watching in the wings, you yeah. know, or like, ah, ah. So for me to be at the racetrack and... And watch these jockeys do what I want to do. Uh, it would just rip my my heart apart, you know. So, the answer to your question, what I've given up for love, you know, in a big way, was even earlier when I was, you know, starting out at the racetrack, was that I, I, uh, I gave up ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I gave that up this summer, so I know what that's like. I gave up ice cream, you know, ice cream, uh, you know, I talk about it in the play too, but it's like, you know, uh, ice cream was my love, you know, but, you know, to, uh, to kind of give you um, an example, you know, um, uh, one of my teachers at Adelphi, Joanne Brueggemann, uh, she, uh, uh, I had injured myself in the morning at the track mm -hmm. and we were doing a Lynn Simonson jazz piece, which I love jazz, you know, because they weren't giving it to you at, at, um, Adelphi. Uh, and I just couldn't wait to dance this, you know, but I got hurt and something happened, you know, in the, in the beginning of the performance. And I guess I blacked out, uh, off stage and, and I woke up in the, uh, in the wardrobe room downstairs in the co costume shop, you know, and, uh, you know, so it had one of those doors, you know, where there was, it was empty on the top and, you know, you could see and hear through and, you know, so and, and Joanne was there, you know, when I woke up and I said, what am I doing here? You know, she, I said, that's the music. I hear it. You know, she said, you can't go up. And I said, I'm going up. And she said, no, no, you got to lay here. And I was like, she said, you're not you, you're not fit. You're not strong enough to go up there. And I literally and I'm not kidding. I literally ripped the door off the hinges. And I, oh, my God. Wow. I went up. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I asked for a photograph of you. Uh, mm -hmm. as a uh, as a five-year-old. And the reason that I ask for this five-year-old uh, uh, photograph is because to me, the five-year-old self is the purest self. Uh, that's before uh, life uh, starts putting the layers on you. 
of who you should be and who you shouldn't be. And yep. here is this photograph. And there you are. You look exactly the same, same smile, same look, everything. Tell I'm us actually, a little bit. What was that? I'm actually uh, about 11, 12 years old here. Okay. You know? uh, yeah, and that was taken uh, by uh, my, my very dear friend and neighbor in Hempstead, Long Island, uh, Mrs. Griffin, who was like my surrogate mom. You know, she would just uh, um, encourage me and I would do like, while I was in college, pirouettes in her kitchen on her floor. <laughs> oh, good for you. But can you tell us a little bit about who this little boy is? Uh, you know, growing up, uh, you were in Long Island. Do you think that it was because of where you were born so close to the racetrack? It's in your bio that led you down the path that you went. Uh, if you were born in any other environment, do you think that you would have gone down the same path that you went down? Uh, no, I, I believe in, in um, serendipity. You know, things happen. You know, they just happen. And, uh, you know, and this is basically the story of small, you know. And uh, I have to say, you know, 98% of it is all true. And um, uh, it, <laughs> I mean, my mother literally brought me from church um to the racetrack and because i was bullied as a kid uh being smaller than most of them you know in my class and seeing the respect that these jockeys had you know i was so taken by it but then my mom <clears throat> put on the brakes with me and she says you're not going to be working at the racetrack it's too dangerous uh uh, but somehow, Robert, excuse me for interrupting. When did the bullying begin for you? Uh, were you the youngest in your classroom? Were you uh, your your stature in small? Uh, were you small because of your age? Were you? Yeah, uh, I was the smallest one in my classroom. Okay, you know, and uh, and uh, uh, you know, and I, uh, I mean, I, I. Anytime when any of the kids, you know, and I knew who the ones, they always got me, you know, stuffing me in that locker or, you know, giving me wedgies, whatever, you know, it was like, oh, I knew they were coming, I, you know. Um, but yeah, that, uh, so anyway, so when I, I had seen uh, these little riders get on these massive animals and just, I mean, they were just, you know, uh, praised and glorified these jockeys. I mean, back in the seventies, they, 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 you know, these, these peanut of a men of a, of a man would, would come out in a three piece suit, but they were like, you know, honored, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, uh, and I thought like this, wow, this is for me. And then, and then the speed of the horses and seeing how fast they were, uh, mm. I just loved how they, they, to me, they're like overgrown dogs, but you know, you couldn't put them on, on your lap. <laughs> <laughs> Just try it. <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, but that was that's that's what kind of got me. Uh, and then what I mean about serendipity was that um, uh, one of my customers, my father, when when I was you know ten, when all his boys you know were at, at that age, you know, he said, "Go, oh, let's go go get a paper route or something," you know. Uh, penny savers or something. So I was working for the Long Island. Did Trail. you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, uh, I had two brothers and one sister. Okay. Yeah, and my sister, you know, she always like Diane. She always pushed me to like dance and all, you know, because she and I always used to mess around, you know, uh, watching uh, old movies together or Soul Train, you know, and and um, and I saw like in your intro, by the way, funny story that. Uh, that picture of uh, George Shakir. Yes, who's a good friend of mine. He's a good, very good friend of mine. Oh my God! Well, you know, he when I saw West Side Story when when I was a kid, I was like, "Who the hell is he?" You know, and uh, and then years later, uh, I'm with Cheetah in San Diego. I think it was called the first annual Dance Award, and Sammy Davis Jr. was hosting it. And uh, so we were all out, you know, in, in the audience, just, you know, in our sweats and whatnot. And Cheetah is sitting in front of me and Tony Stevens, God rest his soul, yeah. next to me. And they had two huge screens, you know, uh, of uh, uh, on both sides of the, uh, 
New York, right? Can you hear yes. the USA? <laughs> Unavoidable. Uh, You've got two the sirens and I've got the weather. My, uh, my device, I'm not going to call her name, but it, the circle is going around because we're expecting a big storm here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see it's getting windy outside the window. So, yes. oh, God. Um, but anyway, they had two huge screens, you know, both sides of the stage, you know. And uh, Cheetah was sitting next to, uh, in front of me with, with some guy and Julia Krause and Lias Minnelli and all that, Leslie Caron. It was like all of these MGM great dancers, you know. And, um, and they showed West Side Story, the rooftop scene. And I, and I said to Tony, I turned to him, I was like, Tony, oh, my God. When that guy did Bernardo, oh, my God, you know, nobody, nobody could hold a candle to him. You know, he was just amazing, you know. And Cheetah's laughing, you know, I can see her shoulders. The guy is laughing and Julia Prowse and Leslie, they're all laughing, Liza Minnelli. And then Cheetah gets up, turns around and she says, uh, Robert, uh, this is George Akiris. George, this is Robert. <laughs> And he and he and he and he was so gracious and the greatest and he said, oh, the I just best love him. Compliment. And then he invited me to lunch. He said you could ask me anything you'd like, you know. And I was like, wow. so there. I had interviewed him years ago, and uh, after the interview, it, I used to write a blog. And after I interviewed him, he called me up and he said, "If you're ever out here, uh, I I want to look you up." And then I was in a documentary along with Cheetah on Carol Channing. And yep, yep. Uh, so I, I, I went out to uh, California and he heard that I was out there and he called me up and he says, what are you doing? And uh, I said, I I'm just hanging out. And he said, well, I'm just around the corner. And he's, we spent the whole day together uh -huh. and we've remained in touch. And so when his book just came out uh, last year before uh, the, have you seen the new West Side Story? I have, yes. Okay. Yes, have. And what are your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> that's not right <laughs> i haven't seen it yet i have yeah. not seen it well I, I i will be honest with you i i thought it was really good i thought it was a great reimagining uh of the production that uh steven spielberg put together and what tony kushner did with the writing i mean mm -hmm. um yeah every character in the uh the film i mean um it, it I'm not going to spoil it for you or, or anyone else. There's more of a backstory with each of the characters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's a, there, there are backstories. And I thought, like, you know, that's that's a great reimagining. If you're going to use that tool, that was great mm -hmm. to do. Because mm -hmm. then you go, like, okay, so, you know, I'm not going to say. I, I really want people and yourself to be, um, um, you know, surprised by it. But I thought it was really good, you know. And I and the funny thing is I happen to know the kid, you know, uh, David Alvarez, who, who plays – Bernardo in West Side Story. And I was going to have him uh, years ago. You know, I was talking to him about doing a reading for me to play the younger me in the film version of Small, which was called Under the Wire. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. And he had just won a Tony Award for uh, Billy Elliot. And, uh, and then he went off, you know. And I don't know what happened. I, I lost touch. I couldn't get a hold of him. And then years later, you I know, know, I, I have a big story. Yeah. He joined the Marines, he comes out, and then boom, he does this. I was like, wow. An, an amazing, I mean, trajectory of his career. But getting back to you, when did the dancing begin for you? Uh, you, you, you talked about the dancing early on, but uh, how did you end up in the dance class uh, early on? Well, here's the funny thing. Um, when I was a kid, I have to say probably about maybe five or six years old, um, I was living in uh, uh, Bayside, Queens at the time. And I don't know why my mother thought it was a good idea, but she, you know, she just bought me a top hat and a cane, you know, and, a, you know, sent me and brought me to a, to a dance class. And, you know, there were all these girls in class. I was like, eh. <laughs> 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 we're, we're, uh, we're the guys, you know? And then, you know, uh, I, later on, I was, you know, watching like um, Wonderama, and watching uh, Bob McAllister, you know, host the show and and he would give away a bike if you won the dance contest. And I'm looking at this kid doing like, I don't know, 380,000 counts of the same move, you know, and I am thought to myself, "Ma, you got to get me on that show because I could do different things, you know, and I'll win that bicycle, maybe even then some. So uh, 
uh, I was taken by that. And then I, I would watch Soul Train. You know, American bandstand didn't really do it for me, but I love Soul Train. And uh, and I I always used to watch, you know, the Ed Sullivan show, you know, with my 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 folks. And uh, and I just had my 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 toe dipped in there. And and it wasn't until when. Um, yeah, I have to say the uh, the uh, disco craze came out. Now, when I started entering like uh, contests, you know, dance contests at the disco techs. Uh, but, you know, it, it, according to your bio, yeah. the film that really did it for you was Saturday Night Fever. Yes. And that's what I was. Yeah, that was gonna, I was going to get to, you know, Saturday Night Fever was it was a huge uh, influence on, on me. And uh, and to watch John Travolta and I'll go like, oh my God, he's dancing. And he can get all these girls. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> That, I mean, see, that was the, that was the real reason that you, well, you know what I mean we're laughing about it but you know when when I got to Adelphi and I was accepted I go like oh my god there are all these all these girls you know um and then after a while well, I thought, talk about the ratio in the theater of a straight dancer with all these women yes. <laughs> so it was yeah I was tired <laughs> <laughs> So yes, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> but 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 you know uh, you know I mean all kidding aside I mean yes I mean the 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 girls in my classes you know I mean they were all stunning you know and and great um, but after a while I thought to myself you know this is not easy this ballet thing and and when 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 Norman Walker gave me that ultimatum I was like I better start paying attention. You know, I really have to, if I want to make something out of myself, uh, I got to work twice as hard. So I was able to transition um, the discipline that mm -hmm. I had at the racetrack for the same discipline that I had for dance. So, I mean, I lived it. I breathed it. I slept it. And, and if I was given choreography, I lived it. I breathed it. I slept it. I would go over it in my head, walk into the supermarket, you know, whatever. But um but then I wanted to go beyond that, you know. Well, that's what I want to ask you about. I mean, it's one thing to know that you have uh, you have this desire to be a dancer, but then something clicks within you where you know that it's more than a desire; that you've got a gift, because a lot of people may want to dance, uh, yes. and I I love dance. I mean, it, it, let let's go to Cheetah for a moment. When I see her on stage, and I will honestly say, I believe that I've seen Cheetah on stage more than any other artist. Yeah. Because any opportunity, and I was at the opening night of Cheetah, a life, I have seen her more times. Just the physicality of what she does walking across the stage, just, just the way that she carries herself. Yeah. I was born with two left feet. I yeah. love. No, I love dance. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, for me as uh, a spectator, I just love it. And I just wish that I had that gift. Uh, and there are so many incredible choreographers out there that I am crazy about. But to know that you have that desire and then to go beyond the desire, to know that you have the gift. When did you know that you had the gift? Um, I, I, I don't think I really, really felt that way or, or thought I had the gift because my passion always led me, you know, and, you know, and things would come out of me, uh, especially if I loved, uh, the music, you know, and it's even true of today, you know, I mean, my manager will go like, yeah, that's right. You know, because <laughs> I don't, I don't take every audition, you know, that, that, that he sends me because the material has got to sink to me. And if it doesn't, then I just, I, I kind of balk, you know, and, uh, uh, um, and not that I'm in that position because I'm not, you know, a millionaire, but the riches for me is always mm -hmm. in the material and getting to do what I want to do. For you, but good for you for saying that. So, but, but that's what it is. I mean, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I remember when, when, uh, when, when they called me in uh, at, at Bernie Telsey's office, like mm -hmm. five times, 
uh, to audition for the original company of, uh, of uh, In the Heights for the father to play opposite uh, Priscilla Lopez. And I was like, uh, I'm wrong for this. Uh, for the fifth time, I'm wrong for this. And they said, they want to, they still want to see you. Please just go. And I, and I end up going. And when I get there, you know, I see everybody behind the table. And I say, hi, how you doing? Um, look, I don't want to waste your time, but um, I'm wrong for this. <laughs> and then this young kid, who I didn't know who he was, it was Lin-Manuel Miranda. And he said, why do you think you're wrong? And I said, well, I just think that he's older. He's not so slick, you know, and, and in shape. You know, he's got a panzeri, you know, his hair is receding. He could barely button his coat and take the pad out and write uh, notes on it for his mundane job, you know. I said, you know, for me, it's it's just not so. It's not, and the guy went, okay, you're right. And then I I offered up a friend of mine, and uh, they called him, and he got the, the job. He got the job, and your friend <laughs> loves you for that. Not that he's not that he's, he's portly or anything like that, or you know, I mean, he just he, he did the right thing for the character. Well, it's great in this business that you have the knowledge to know that, uh, and that says a lot about your character. Uh, there are very few, I mean, that hunger that so many people have of saying, I've got to have this, I've got to have this. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are things where I, I know what I'm good at. I just said, I'm, I, you know, I've got two left feet. I'm not uh, going to go out for something that I'm not right for. Uh, and it's great that you also say, you know, let me bring my friend in, you know, and get let him get seen. Well, you know, it's funny. I'm clear on that. But what I'm not clear is, you know, you know what my, where my talent lies, because honestly, um, you just keep working at it every day, you know, whether it's singing or, you know, even the show's small. It's like, uh, you know, I guess we're going to find out where it really lies, you know, mm -hmm. with, with the audience. I mean, and that's the truth. I'm going to be there. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely you know, coming to see it. Yeah, you'll never invite me on your show again. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second time I've invited you here. <laughs> True. Richard. True. You know. no. <laughs> but um, so you know, you went to Adelphi, you you were uh you are starting to find yourself, you are now going to go out into the world to pursue a career. Yeah. Um, what are the early stages for you? When did it start to happen for you? Well, you know what, I mean, um yeah. I, I, I tend to break the rules, which is not always good, you know. Um, and what I mean by that is that when I was going to, when I started out in college in my first three months there as a, as a freshman, you know, uh, I, I was asking about auditioning in the city and they said, no, no, you, you know, all the other students were like, no, you, you we, we're not allowed to audition. We you shouldn't audition. I, and I thought to myself, no, I'm going to audition. I want to see what that's like. I want to know what that language is like. So I, you know, sorry, Norman, if you're if you're listening, watching, but <laughs> I cut class so I could go and audition. Actually, Norman knew about this, you know, because he said to me, you, uh, if you're going to audition for a chorus line, uh, I know the, uh, the guy who's a dance captain there, Morris Freed. So uh, I went and everyone is... It was during the summertime and everyone is hanging out in Schubert Alley. Uh, it was warm outside. Mm -hmm. I went to the stage door and, uh, and I said, hi, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for Mr. Morris Freed. And he said, oh, okay, hang on, Morris Freed, Morris Freed, can you come up to the to the, to the the door, please, Morris Freed? He comes up and uh, I said, hi, I'm Robert Montano. Um, you don't know me, but uh, Norman Walker uh, sends his regards. So he goes, oh, Norman. I said, listen, I don't have my equity card. Um, and he says, got you, I got you. I said, you're going to come in with the first group. So I went in and I see all these guys, you know, stretching and doing spins and talking. Everyone knows each other and I'm stretching and I feel like a fish out of water. And I go, oh, my God. And when we got up on stage, you know, I was number three. And I'll never forget Carrie Lowenstein. God rest his soul. You know, Carrie Lowenstein was number two. I was number three. And... Uh, Michael Bennett was out in the house and uh, he said, uh, okay, everyone, you know, state your name, uh, where you're from, what are you doing, you know, and then give me a, a, a time step and a classical double pirouette. And I turned to him and I said, a time step, what's a time step? And he said, it's tapping. I was like, oh my God. So when it got to me, <laughs> I said, I was, I was shaking. I said, hi, I'm a, I'm Robert Montano and I'm a studio at a 
Delphi University. I uh, meant student. And he said, I know what you meant. Uh, give me a classical double pirouette and a time step. And I, not in that order, you know, and I was doing the time step and I was shuffling around kind of like, look at me up here, you know. And then I thought to myself, because I didn't know how to do a time step, I gave him a triple pirouette and then boom, you know, and I ended beautifully. And he said, I asked for a double, learn how to take direction next. And that was it. So when I, when I got home, well, when I was on the train heading back to Long Island, I, I was on that train looking out the window and just thinking to myself, this is hard. That was a hard lesson. And I said, you know, I got to learn to listen. I got to learn how to take direction and I got to learn how to do a time step. So I said, it's not too late to just leave this, to jump ship. Mm. I thought to myself, no, pull your jock up and let's go. And, uh, and that's what I did. I put my nose to the grindstone and I just worked really, really hard. And, um, and from there, you know, uh, I don't want to blow the, the, the ending of my show, you know? No, 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 no. no. We're actually going to give away a couple of tickets to your show at the end of the show today. Oh, uh, really? yes. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, we don't want to give away the ending to your show, but, uh, how long did it take before you got your, uh, what you consider your first break in this business? Or will that be giving away a spoiler for your that show? Giving Sorry. away the spoiler, yes. Oh, it will be. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, well, uh, uh, what was the show? They got you your equity card. Is that, that giving it away too? <laughs> yes. These are all things in the show, <laughs> everyone. What's behind curtain number three? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to ask me questions? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could answer well, them. Well, I, I, that's fine because uh, this is great because these are uh, these are things that will be brought up in the show. Yeah, I know where I want to go with this now, okay. uh, because I also have a one man show about my coming to New York. Uh -huh. um, when what was the impetus for you to want to put your story on stage? Oh well, you know what. Uh... It's, it's a long journey, but I'll make it condensed. But um, I had written uh, the film Under the Wire, which was um, inspired by a true story. It mm -hmm. wasn't all true. And, um, and it had actually gotten option twice. Um, but, you know, there was an agreement that if they were messing around with the story to my uh, disliking, mm -hmm. that I can have it back without any charge. So uh, that's what happened because... They were seeing money in their eyes, you know, sea biscuit this, sea biscuit that. And I go like, no, it's not about sea biscuit. It's about a boy's shattered dreams and where he goes from there. Mm -hmm. Basically, Rocky meets the wrestler, meets Rocky again, you know. And um, and then, you know, I was approached by, uh, which I have to pay homage to, and I hope you're hearing this, Jackson, Jackson Gay. She's a wonderful director. And she had directed me in like three or four different plays. And we had become friends, you know, over the course of time. And uh, she saw on my website that uh, I had uh, written a screenplay under the wire. So she asked to read it. She read it and wanted to meet with me and said, you need to um, write this movie into a one man play and you need to let me direct it. And I said, no, on all of the... <laughs> I know about the writing, you know, I would not say no to her to direct, but, you know, she kept asking me about it. And, uh, and I finally broke down thinking to myself, you know, I'm, I'm getting older. What am I afraid of? Mm -hmm. You know, and I started penning it and Jackson and I always, you know, stayed in touch. And, and, um, I wrote three pages on my computer and I hit send. It went to her. Uh, she got back to me within like about an hour's time. She uh, said, look, I'm up in Yale. I'm working with Green Day, another project. Um, come on up, write as many pages before you get here. Um, but this is it. This is what I'm talking about. This is, this is going to work, you know. And we, uh, we worked on it, you know, a lot. And, um, and then, you know, Jackson, I mean, because she's, she's very busy. She's mm -hmm. a very soft. Uh, director and um, 
and I needed her more at that at a certain time, you know. And uh, then I decided, you know, ah, let me shelve it. And then when I was up uh, in, a, in the Denver Center, you know, I was doing a play there. Uh, they said, you know, do you do any writing? And I said, well, yeah, you know. And they said, well, what you? And I told them about small. And and they said, well, you should enter into the contest over here for the playwrights, you know, festival. And I was like, ah, you know. And I said, well, you may not get in anyway, but they only pick six writers, and you read the first 10 pages of it if you get picked out of like you know 200 entries or something like that well it got picked you know and uh and i read the 10 pages and then i had people giving me cards you know to uh, you know I, I had no representation you know uh, as a writer mm -hmm. and um and then i continued working on it from there and i and i wrote the ending and and then uh, uh my literary agent at that time said are you still you know, with Jackson, I said, well, she's very busy. And she said, well, I have somebody else you might want to take a look at, uh, Jessie Hill. And she was also out of Yale. And uh, she said, I don't know if she's going to like it, but, you know, can I give it to her to read? And I said, yeah. So um, that day when she gave it to her, you know, two days later, I get a phone call from Jessie herself, said, hey, I hope you don't mind me calling you directly, but, you know, uh, our literary agent said it would be good that I can just call you directly. I said, okay, yeah, it's okay. And she said, can I meet with you? And I said, sure. And she said, can I ask you for a strange request? And I said, yeah, go ahead. And she said, would you read it for me? And I said, sure. I said, you have to come to my apartment. I'm not going to do it in a coffee shop. So, <laughs> so she met me here and uh, she said, I would really like to work with you on this. And I said, well, I only have one question for you. And and that is, what would you bring to the table? What would you do differently? You good know, question. Said, Very good. Yeah. And she answered it beautifully. And, and I said, you're in. She said, don't you want time to think about it? I said, viscerally, my heart always tells me, you know, you're, you're in. I'm going to ask you a question, and you don't have to give the answer if you don't want to. Okay. <laughs> but what did she bring to the table? Well, um, well, it's not, it's, you know, it's not giving anything away because, you know, uh, she said, you may not like this idea and this may cost my chances, but uh, you have a lot of video footage and pictures of all these different characters, you know, that as you're talking about them, you know, it, it's coming up on the screen and that, this and that. And she said, what you just did and creating those characters and bringing them to life is far more interesting than seeing a picture on the screen that we know wow. nothing about the person. And I was like, okay, okay. And then she said, and can we talk about the ending? And uh, we talked about the ending, which I'm not gonna give away. Of and she gave, me, uh, <laughs> she gave me a lot of, a lot of uh, food for thought. And I looked at it and you know, you're always a little reticent about like, you know, I don't know if I want to change things, but you know what? I come from the rule of thumb that you got to let your babies go sometimes, you know, and just hear what, hear, and it's one of the things that Cheetah taught me, I have to say. She, uh, you know, uh, I remember when we were doing Kiss of the Spider Woman and we were, we were uh, in Toronto uh, uh, and we were, before we even opened, you know, and, and, and it was a collapsible table so in the middle of the table you know the seams you know of the of the hinges they were on top of the table and and i looked up at her you know and i have known cheetah for quite some time at this point and i said you know cheat um what happens to you if you hit that you're gonna go down and she said no no no. let me just try it and if it doesn't work then we'll then i'll talk to them about it but i have to try it first and I was like, okay. She said, try everything. Try everything. Try everything. That's great. And then it doesn't work. You know, I was like, okay. And that always stuck in my head, you know. And she's taught me a lot of things, Chi. And um, she is a queen of Broadway. Uh, absolutely. Well, I, were you, um, I think that it's this innate quality that's within you. But did you think that you were a writer before you sat down to write the screenplay? uh that led to this uh no did an idea just all of a sudden pop in one night and you start writing away where did it become uh come from well it, it came from a, a friend of mine 
you know, and he said, you know, you should start, start writing uh, about, you know, uh, well, that friend is John Jury. You know, he was the artistic director at at uh, the Actors Theater of Louisville. And um, great theater. Great. Yeah. Theater. And while um, I was uh, I had left Kiss of the Spider Woman to go there to do a play for Jose Rivera called Cloud Tectonics and um, premiered that there. Beautiful play. And uh, and John and I, we were, uh, you know, at the bar uh, at opening night you know sorry this is the second time when i had worked at actress mm -hmm. not to sound like that but you know um but john had said to me you know at the bar you know say miss montano and we're both a little you know little blotto <laughs> so he said miss montano you know uh, i i see that you write in your biography you know that you always pay homage to the racetrack you should write something about that and i said no <laughs> and he said well let me ask you a few questions you know he said um uh, how many, uh, how many races have you won? I was like, just kill me. Put a stake through my heart. I said, none. Um, how many, uh, how many, uh, races did you ride? And I was like, seven. And he said, just seven. I was like, yeah, we, we have to say just seven, <laughs> seven, another stake. You know, he said, how many races can a, can a jockey, uh, ride you know uh in a day and i said well if they have a great agent they could ride the whole card which is nine races and he said and how many years did you ride and i said well i struggled with my weight uh at the racetrack for a good two and a half to three years and he said and in between those races you were doing what and i said losing weight and he said that's your story it's about perseverance it's about never giving up you know, he said, you should really think about it. And I said, no, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, if you put something in my head and I think like, if I think that you may have something there, it just, it stays in there and, and it stayed in there. And then when Jackson, you know, was talking to me, another friend of mine talked to me about riding, you know, something about the racetrack. And after, you know, speaking to John Jury about it at that time, I was like, but, you know, really, it, it uh, the good germination was from uh, John Jury. You know, mm -hmm. I loved working with him. Great, great director. Lots of fun. Has it changed a lot since Joe uh, Brancato saw it at Signature Theater uh, from the journey from there to where it is now? Well, it's more defined, you know. Um, you know, I mean, we had a nice piece of clay, you know. Um, I got to talk in my father's terms because my mm -hmm. father, God rest his soul, I mean, he at least got a chance to see uh, the first reading of Small. Oh, God bless him. He's a wonderful uh, artist, very respected in his field. Um, but he, uh, you know, we had that clay and we had some some definition, you know, the first round of definition but now we're really getting into you know the eyelashes and you know the creases and you know the, the caricature of the of the piece and and that's what had taken place uh from the time that joe had seen it at signature uh to now, now. when you did it at signature was that a run or was that a one night only event that was a that was a one night only event yeah will this be the first time that you've done a run of this show oh yeah wow yeah. Wow. Yeah. And yesterday, and that's why I say, and I, and I, and I kid you not, you know, at uh, my age, you know, <laughs> that, oh. that I'm uh, a lot older than you are. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait till you see what I do in this thing. Cause it's, you know, it's a lot of riding. It's a lot of dancing. It's uh, moving around and, and doing these different characters. So yesterday, really, I mean, we, we had, we only had uh, five days of rehearsal with, only a certain amount of hours that you're allowed to rehearse for this particular contract. Mm -hmm. And um, so we really stuffed in a good size eight foot into a six shoe, you know, in mm -hmm. that time. And, and on top of that, that we, uh, you know, I was, I was urged to do even more writing about uh, the dancing uh, uh, and my time at Adelphi. So now, didn't this show get postponed because of COVID? Yes, and and it was uh, with a uh, different uh, theater, the Abington, uh, with uh, Chad Austin. Um, which uh, hey, Chad, 
that uh, that uh, yeah. Uh, so, so we're going to do a thing called one night only reading uh, for him on May the third. But it's a reading that's going to be uh, off Broadway. Um, but yeah, this is this is the first fully fleshed uh, staging with with a with a set with lighting with sound design which by the way i i have to say you know i have uh brian ronan who is the uh, sound designer the thing that 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 uh jesse and i both understood uh that was most important about this piece was sound design and that's what made me realize that when i started writing the, those first three pages of small that it was sound design because i didn't know how to do that you know mm. years earlier but sound design is key to this piece that's going to bring the audience to the place where I visited, that I first heard and saw. And it, and it, and it helps me, you know, to get to those places. And uh, uh, so, you know, Brian Ronan, um, who's a very busy man, you know, with Book of Mormon and, you know, uh, 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 Mrs. Doubtfire now about to do Funny Girl, uh, to do, you know, uh, a small and for me to get him, you know, I was lucky. And uh, uh, so the merging of it, you know, of, of doing the performance and having that is really key to this piece. And, and that's something that Jesse and I both understood uh, very well. You know? So Small is opening on the 18th. Uh, you're doing uh, two performances of uh, previews before you have an official opening. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, two two Friday, two Saturday, and one Sunday. Yes, and then uh, uh, I think I'm, uh, I'm going to be at your opening. Uh, so, and then you're going to play through the 27th, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then do you have plans after that, or what's on your schedule after this? Well, after that, you know, I mean, I, I'm I, I'm waiting to hear on a project, a film pro uh, project that. Um, uh, that I am up for, and I won't, you know, say what, because you know, you never jinx it. Um, but if that doesn't happen, you know, uh, I am going to uh, Colorado to go visit my daughter. Oh, good for you. Where in Colorado? Uh, she lives in Trinidad, Colorado. Yeah. She's four years old. I love her. Oh, good for you. Uh, well, I'm going to, we're going to give away uh, a couple of tickets. I'm going to show everyone uh, how we're going to do this. Uh, the word for today is contentment. Uh, when you hear the word contentment, what does that mean for you at this point in your life? Well, you know, I I, I hate to sound uh, strange about this, but I am content in my life right now. I mean, everything uh, that I've put my mind to, that I've set my goals to, you know, um, for the most part, all of that has come true, you know, but I'm content, you know, and, 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 and I have to say, you know, pulling back from the business, you know, just knowing that I have, you know, a child in my life, you know, mm -hmm. my daughter, that, that totally, totally makes me complete, you know? That's so, great. Yeah. Well, I always end uh, our shows with my homage to James Lipton inside the Actors Studio. So I've got some questions here that I'm going to ask you. Oh, no. Uh, and the first question is, and oh, no. I, I, yeah. I, may, I may know the answer to this, uh, yeah. who is the person with whom you've been most infatuated with uh, in your career? <clears throat> infatuated? Yes. Um, well, uh well, I mean, uh, I, I have to say, uh, he's he is. Well, there are two of them. Can I can I do two? Yes. That's Great. Right. Okay. Uh, I really I, I have such a, a huge respect for um, the talent of of their acting um, and writing, uh, which is uh, uh, Sean Penn and Gary Oldman. Wow. They are my two favorite uh, actors. You know. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I just, I, I just, I love them. I think they're, they're really amazing, extraordinary uh, artists. And uh, Sean Penn, uh, and a great activist and doing incredible work. So uh, thank you, Sean Penn, if he happens to be watching. Yeah. Uh, what is the best possible attitude 
uh, uh, to have in this business? Stay open. Stay open. Uh, if it, I think if you're, you know, even though even though I may be, you know, uh, resistant sometimes to uh, notes or changes, you know, I go, I, I, I feel that little pinch and I go, nope, stay open, stay open, hear what happens and anything. Good things could come out of that. You just. That's you true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I, someone is saying that they want to see the show, but it's too far away. But I want to say still enter to say a uh, hashtag contentment, because if you're too far away and you win, uh, you'll get a penguin uh, rep mug. They've got great mugs there, you know. Uh, you will win a prize today. Uh, and um, what is the, I wanna ask you, what is the lowest point that you've had in your career? I'm asking this for a reason. <clears throat> How did you get through it? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I mean, I I, I had uh, performed in a string of, of shows, you know, uh, right when I came out of college. Um, and then I hit a low that um, I was just not used to. And it wasn't because, uh, it wasn't because that, uh, um, because I didn't want to, uh, uh, let me let me just be clear about this. At that time, to be a, a dancer, you were thought of just as a dancer. Mm -hmm. But I wanted mm -hmm. to break that mold because I wanted to do something more. I wanted to act. I wanted to explore what that was like. But, you know, as a dancer, they wouldn't take a chance on you. So I was like willing to give up my dancing because I always say uh, the buck stops with you. The only way that they're going to take you seriously is if you take yourself seriously first. And so I went through that low and it was a hard, excruciating time, you know, where I felt like I was being dragged through cut glass mm. and that nothing was coming, you know. Uh, but then it just took one thing, you know, and when that one thing happened, you know, um, I, I it, it was a good affirmation that I was like worthy. And I was like, OK, hold on to it, you know, because if anyone is in this business thinking that they're, they're going to win the lottery, yeah, you might win the lottery, but then where do you go from there? What's really going to be fulfilling for you, you know, as an artist? So I felt like, you know, uh, I want to, I want to continue dancing, which I did. I, I went back and I, and I danced with Cheetah, you know, in uh, Kiss of the Spider Woman, yes. you know, on her, on her show. And it was called uh, Cheetah Plus Two. Um, so, but I was able to do both then because I was known as an actor and a dancer. So I was like, okay, I feel like, I'm whole now. Great. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Um, well, uh, besides Cheetah, uh, yeah. who is the person that you know in this business who has the freest spirit? The freest spirit besides Cheetah? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's myself. No. <laughs> 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 good. Well, that's good. Uh, what is the major lesson that you've learned uh, from what you have been through in the past year? Oh, my God. You know, I mean, during this pandemic, one of the things that I that I that I thought about at that time is like, you know, we're all on the same level. We're all on the same plane, you know. And I felt like, you know, it, it didn't matter who you are, what you did. We were all fighting this crazy pandemic battle together. It's true. You know? And I even thought to myself, if I could even go back a little bit, like during 9-11. Um, and I was sitting home watching Aaron Brown on CNN, just losing weight, you know, not because I, I wanted to, because I, because I was so nervous and I thought to myself, what am I doing with my life that is so important, you know? So I'm an actor, so I'm a dancer, so I can do this and that. But I didn't feel like I was doing enough. So I went down to uh, the recruiting office at uh, uh, f uh, Times Square and uh, joined or wanted to join I uh, the Marines. 
and I gave them, you know, my license, you know, Miss Montana, we're going to fill out your thing, you know, and, you know, they can have your, your license. And he was looking at my license, start to fill out. And he goes, oh, oh, Miss Montana, um, I'm sorry, but you're past the age. You can't. I was like, what? That was the first time anyone told me I was too old to do something. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> but, in, it, but in a way, it was, it was a blessing because then Rob Marshall calls me up and he says, hey, listen, I'm putting, doing this movie Chicago. You know, would you like to, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, okay. So good for you. Good for that's great. Um, what activities besides dancing uh, and writing uh, and acting uh, give you purpose? I like building things. I like building things. You know, I've, I've you know, I, I built a pergola, I built a deck, I built my sister a nice koi pond, you know, with a waterfall. I like building things with my hands. You know, I like, you know, even gardening. I just, you know, I don't know if it has anything to do with my my age, but, you know, yeah. I just like building things. I like creating things and doing, since I don't have my father's skill of doing a perfect, you know, circle, you know, I can muddy it up and do other things. Good for you. That's great. Favorite movie besides uh, oh, Saturday yeah. Night Fever? Yeah, I know you're gonna you're gonna think this is like you know Debbie Downer, but uh, ordinary people. Oh, that yeah. movie when that movie came out. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you a funny story very quickly. That movie comes out; it wins the Academy Award. Yeah, I go to see the movie. I'm the only one sitting in the movie theater, and I am bawling my eyes out. And this young woman working at movie theater brought me a box of Kleenexes. <laughs> I'm just sitting there crying my eyes out. Oh my God. I wish he had brought me that. Cause I saw that when I was in college and I went all by myself and I'm like this, even though there was nobody sitting beside me, I was covering my, you know, uh, you know oh just, my God. love that movie. Did something to me, affected me. Uh, do you believe in the afterlife? And if so, what do you think it will be like? Well, you know, I, since I lost my dad, you know, uh, my dad and I were very, very close as my mother and I are, uh, there's gotta be one, you know? And I, I, uh, I just know he's, he's waiting for me, you know, and telling me it's cool. Don't worry about it. You know, mm. uh, there's, a, there's a racetrack up here and yeah. dance studios and, you know, uh, but it's all white, you know, and clouds, you know. Well, I hope I hope that's true. Yeah, and, I think my so. uh, and my last question for you, uh, how do you desire that others see you at this point in your career and life? See me in my career and life? Um, I don't know. I, that's, that's, that's a really hard question. I mean, I don't never on a pedestal that's for sure but i would like to be respected you know as a as an artist but even before that as a person you know yeah. well you are trust me you are <laughs> um i'm going to give away uh a couple of tickets for your show and i'm going to show you how this is done uh so we have a few a couple of people here my hands okay. are here so that you know that i I'm not picking the winner. Okay. Uh, and uh, so and it's Glenn Charlo. So, uh, Glenn, I know how to get the tickets to you, or uh, we'll work this out. I want to show you something, Robert. Uh, so, Glenn, I know how to get in touch with you. So, uh, I will share this with everyone. I mentioned this at the beginning of the show. Um, so, uh, Robert was uh, scheduled to be here uh, last week. I'm going to pull this off the wall here. So Robert was supposed to be here last week and uh, he wasn't able uh, to be here because everything that could possibly go wrong uh, went wrong. Uh, and before we went live, he told me that uh, he was on Richie Rich's uh, show. Um, and I told him that Richie Rich, uh, everything uh, that he does, he stole from me. Uh, <laughs> yes, um, uh, I love Richie Rich. <laughs> I want to share something with you. This is uh, Richie Ridge. Uh, oh, I don't know if you can see the guy. Yes. That's Richie Ridge and me and Carol oh, Channing. Uh, Carol Channing. The glare is picking up there. There's better without the glare. Yeah, I see. Uh, and it sits over my desk uh, right. of 100 years ago okay. uh, when we were kids. 
Uh, so Richie Rich sits over my desk. Mm. Uh, I just uh, admire him and respect yes. him. So if you do see him tonight, say hello for me. I will. Um, I, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, don't go anywhere for a moment. Uh, I want to thank everybody who showed up today. Uh, I know that I can speak for Robert when I say this. Uh, we don't take it lightly when you show up. So if this was your first time here, I hope it won't be your last. Uh, please subscribe to Richard Skipper Celebrates. Leave a comment on uh, YouTube. Uh, let me know what you think of today's show. Uh, share this with your friends. And tell your friends about Small. It will be at Penguin Rep Theater right here in Rockland County in Stony Point. It's a great theater. Please check it out. And it will be there from the 18th through the 27th. Uh, I will be there on opening afternoon, not opening night. Uh, and I can't wait, Robert. Uh, everyone, I always end every show by telling everyone to go out and do something nice for somebody else without expecting anything in return. Go to your Facebook, uh, Facebook friends list and reach out to the seventh name that pops up today and reach out with a phone call. Not an email message, not a text message, not a private inbox message, but a phone call. And let that person know what they mean to you. Uh, as our, my dear friend, Sean Moniker always says, we're always in this together, but we're not in the same boat. And I always say, if you're going to go out in a boat, make sure you bring a skipper along. So, <laughs> Robert, I'm going to leave the screen and I'm going to give you the final word. Anything you want to say about anything that we talked about today that you want to build upon, anything that we didn't talk about that you wish we had, or just any final message that you want to put out to anyone who's watching, don't worry about how to end the show. As soon as you say goodbye, the final credits will roll. Okay. Thank you for being here, and I yeah. hope you'll come back sometime. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And Thank I'll you. see you uh, in uh, a few days. Yes, uh, so. and I appreciate you having me on. Thank okay. you so much. And um, well, yeah, the only thing I would like to say is that uh, if you do come see the show, um, I hope you are inspired by it uh, because it is about inspiration. And, um, you know, uh, for anything that you set your mind on, a goal, you know, if you're, 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 you're reaching for it, you know, don't give up on it. You know, just keep going because it'll come. It'll come. You know, um, this putting together small is uh, is proof of that for me. So, um, yeah. Anyway, thank you. Uh, have a good day. And thank you all for, for uh, tuning in. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.